I try to be a photographer. I don't know how to talk. I'm not interested in talking. If I have something to say, perhaps it can be found in my photos. I'm not interested in explaining things, in saying why and how. I'm willing to show my photos, not so much my contact prints. I often work on small prints. I look at them frequently and for a long time, put them up on the wall and compare them to make sure of my choice. I leave it to others to say what they mean. You know my photos, you published them, you've exhibited them, so you can say whether they have a meaning or not. It's true. I've known Kudelka for a long time, for 20 years, since he left Czechoslovakia. It was the end of the Prague Spring, the end of a dream. There was no dialogue possible between the Russian soldiers and the population of a city under martial law. Violence was growing constantly. Joseph Kudelka lived intensely through these mad summer days, this national tragedy. He says it was the high point of his life. He is not a witness of history. The story he tells in feverish pictures, that story is his own. Two years later, he came to Paris. He joined Magnum and has never stopped moving since. From Ireland to Sicily, from Greece to Spain. He still lives on next to nothing, still continues to work. He says, I want to see everything, to look at everything. I want to be the view itself. André Breton once said that the eye exists in a primitive state. If you apply that to photography, and you're looking for a name to illustrate it, Kudelka's seems the most appropriate. His silent, frenzied accumulation of images and his paradoxal organization of time are primitive. Photography taken as a seasonal activity, with fine weather for the harvest, storage that lasts through the winter, contact sheets in an attic and small prints by the thousands. Prints he goes over time and time again, automates and combines, all those pictures he refuses to acknowledge. And then the others, 
the ones that are his, his for life, the ones he acknowledges and accepts. His contempt for commentary and explanation, justification, is primitive too. His rejection even of captions and of any information. Only a fierce drive to do what he must. Seeing. A frenzy of seeing. More and more. And of keeping what he sees. Setting it in a form that is his. According to themes which become more distinct and clear as time goes by. As I wander through these contact sheets marked in three colors, white, blue, and red, leafing through the piles of prints he leaves on my table each year, I feel I'm following in his footsteps, putting my eye to his viewfinder. I travel by proxy, seeing what he has seen, suddenly gripped by a truth that belongs only to him, punctuated by red lines. <laughs> 